last lecture, uh, lecture uh, in Lecture 9, uh, the last part of, of Lecture 9, will be relatively short because I'd like to leave the question of Facebook open uh, for class discussion um, at MIT. However, uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk briefly about, um, you know, the way that Facebook has evolved and then uh, we'll ask about some, some basic questions. Uh, regarding Facebook versus Apple, Google, uh, and Amazon. So it'll be a very short lecture uh, and introduce more questions than probably uh, answers so that we can discuss them in class. So the thing I really want to discuss um, uh, regarding Facebook is how, and use your understanding now, is to think about how innovative is Facebook. But you guys might not know the history, so I'll give you a very quick and very high level uh, view. Um, so, uh, as you probably know, uh, Facebook was created on a Harvard campus, uh, and uh, you can think about um, uh, sort of understanding uh, in technology space that people can be interconnected peer to peer, and there was a lot of peer to peer activity going on, so it wasn't just Facebook. Um, but how would you use that? So, the market space was kind of open. Um, and uh, implementation-wise, you know, you'd assume that, like your predecessors, Amazon and Google, and everybody else, there would be probably some way uh, to to get revenue. And in fact, that was one of the uh, one of the uh, very early um, decision points in Facebook. Uh, as you know, the two founders had a disagreement very early on. As soon as it took off. Uh, Zuckerberg didn't want to converge on particular implementation yet, and uh, uh, the um, that was in disagreement with his uh, his co-founder, and they split over that. Um, like Amazon, Facebook, without refining its implementation, uh, decided to use investor capital to um, increase its user base and here we are today. Uh, I purposely have left out more details but gave you enough to think about how innovative is Facebook compared to the other, well first of all just how innovative is it in the sort of incremental uh, fundamental scale. Second uh, thing I want you to think about is to think about the, um, in Lecture 9, we've covered Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Google. And I want to introduce a new concept, which currently has no measurement. But you can see with our innovation model that in the future, we might be able to define something that I can intellectually feel right now which is something called the innovation capacity. Um, and, and again, this comes about because of our model and because of what we're doing here. I want you to see that we can see differences in Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Google. And so I want, I want you to think about that. And I say innovation capacity, by the way, is because uh, you cannot determine whether an organization will actually be innovative uh, in the future. And the reason is that you could have a horrible CEO, for example, come in, like uh, other companies where people have come in and there's been all of a sudden a loss of momentum and a loss of innovation because they inherently don't understand the types of processes that we've been talking about. Now, that company could have had a huge innova innovation capacity just beforehand. Uh, so um, we want to be careful here in that, uh, you know, it's innovation capacity. Innovation capacity is related to, you know, can they run the innovation process as we have described it? create higher revenue and new businesses. 
or, or improve their existing one. And uh, think about that, and that ends uh, Lecture 9, which is covering the uh, sort of modern uh, companies that I think everybody thinks about when they think about uh, innovation. Thank you.